day three of filming with the PMU Link team and it's been an interesting few days. Day one we had a chap come in who was talking about tattooing scalps, uh, which obviously benefits uh, men with baldness, well not just men I suppose. We also witnessed the utterly painless procedure of tattoo removal. difference between photo and videography on day is the fact that videographers record sound. I'm shaking. <laughs> now obviously the most important parts of a wedding are the speeches and the ceremony and obviously these contain people talking. It's okay though because half of you are Irish so I'm relying on the fact you're already drunk. <laughs> so when you're looking back at your wedding in years to come to not record these you're missing out on a, a big chunk of that really. The reason why I'm talking about sound this month is um, we do one-to-one -one training with videographers uh, now and again and one recently contacted us and sent through an example and within a few seconds I'd noticed that his biggest problem was that he had recorded all the sound on the on-camera microphones which is a big new-new. There's nothing wrong with the microphones in the camera it's just the fact that they are in the camera. A general rule of thumb is the closer the microphone is to the subject the better the sound will be. So you'll notice here I've got a little microphone attached to my uh, t-shirt here which is just underneath my chin but if we cut to the onboard microphone it would usually pick up some maybe the computer buzzing or there's a building side going on behind maybe it's got a bit of that I don't know and just just room out ambience because it's it's further away so it's, it's got to pick up everything in between as well and this camera is only three feet away from me at the moment so it might be picking me up reasonably well but if you're in a wedding ceremony where you could be up to 15 20 even 30 feet away from the bride and groom it could sound like this but again that can be easily fixed by attaching a mic closer to the bride and groom all that i am i give to you and all that i have I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. So like many of the videographers, we have different microphones for different situations, depending on the environment you're in, uh, how many people you're recording, possibly what they're wearing, if the venue or DJ is supplying microphones. So at the start of the day, um, in the bride preps or groom preps, uh, sound isn't as important, but we do sort of like stick a microphone just on a table in the center of the room, just for a couple of minutes. Um, just so we can get some ambient sound because there's all sorts of noise going on with the hair dryers, music and just random conversations which wouldn't really make sense on a wedding film. The ceremony, so uh, recording the vows is very important so we would uh, be attaching one of these uh, sort of lab systems uh, into the groom's pocket which picks up both uh, him and the bride very clearly. So I'll never forget how amazing you look that day and how amazing you look today, you look absolutely stunning. I know a small amount of people do mic up the brides, but it's something that currently we don't do because I just feel that like the system works well enough to pick up the bride's voice. Thank you for being weird with me and making me laugh <laughs> until I cry. <laughs> if the vicar or registrar will allow it, uh, we will attach a microphone similar to the one I'm wearing here. Um, they don't always allow it, uh, some can, can be quite funny about that, but that's not a problem because the one from the groom can pick up them well enough. If it's a church and we have readings then we will attach another one of these microphones um, sort of on a lectern which pick them up really well. When the one whose hand you're holding is the one who holds your heart, when the one whose eyes you gaze into gives your hopes and dreams their start. If it's a civil ceremony we will try to find out who's doing the readings and attach the microphone to either uh, the book they're reading from or on themselves. Because the ceremony is a live event um, certain things do happen so we will actually re-record the reading sometimes uh, because maybe children were crying or people coughing or air conditioning or anything really and uh, so we will take that person off to a quiet room sometimes during the day just for a couple of minutes just to re-record it and most of the time it, it is actually a better version that can be used on the wedding film. In the drinks reception we would probably uh, stick a couple of microphones just around to pick up a bit of ambient as before. If they had some sort of music act uh, during the drinks reception we would play some microphones next to them just so we can pick up a little bit of that to use in the film. Speeches. So this is where uh, it gets a little bit more technical really. So 
depending on how many speakers you're having, um, again, if they have house mics, we would look at micing up every speaker. Uh, usually it's the groom, uh, father, the bride, groom, and best man. But more often than not now, there could be two or three best men. Recently we had seven. So ideally we'd want to put a microphone on every single person and usually have a backup, whether that's plugging through the DJ system. Start swimming, Joe says, turn the jacuzzi on. The jacuzzi comes on and everyone's clothes come off. Or simply attaching one of these microphones uh, to the house mic, uh, sort of a piggyback effect. In the cases where we have a bride's speech, uh, I'm not really a big fan of attaching wires and microphones to the dress because it can spoil the photos and videos. Um, so the piggyback effect works quite well. Shortly afterwards, I knew I'd found the one when on Valentine's Day 2014, a slightly drunk Chris Ward turned up on my doorstep at 10 p.m with a Domino's pizza clutching a bunch of freshly picked grass. <laughs> and as mentioned, using that piggyback effect and uh, plugging into the DJ system meant that we didn't have to uh, spend time micing up seven different people. Oh, um, I was watching a horror film with my friends and before the horror film started, my dad had a, a wrestling mask on that was a clown wrestling mask. So just now and again when we're asked to do interviews, uh, usually we have a couch set up where we have, uh, have two, three or maybe four people. Um, so we would use a shotgun mic uh, below them or if it's an individual, something similar to the setup I've got here. For the most like lovely sister-in-law to be you could ever hope for. And throughout the day we'll be recording general sounds which happened on the day including crowd atmosphere, um, city centre sounds, woodland sounds if you have you. Uh, Wedding by a lakeside, fireworks. A wedding film is not all about moving images. Sound is so important to the actual end product. Sound is 50% of the wedding film. Remember that. Pointy finger. Have you got pants on? Yeah, oh, yeah that's right, I couldn't see that. Hang on, should we get into the video? Oh, God. Dead bodies. Dead bodies. Dead bodies. Oh, you could put loads of dead bodies in there. Really, I did. They're practicing their first dance before they go in. Go on, go on, let's see that spin. So we're over the busy summer period. We've got six to edit at the moment, plus a few commercial jobs. I better get on with it. See you next week.